Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner. Today is stage 18 of the 2023 Tour de France. We just finished the marvelous mountain stages here at the 23 Tour de France yesterday, and today is going to be a field sprint stage. I told you yesterday, should be a field sprint stage because it's 185 kilometers with only two categorized climbs, and both of them are category four. They'll summit at the top of about 120 kilometers to go and about 80 kilometers to go. Then there'll be the intermediate sprint competition with about 50 kilometers to go, and then basically flat straight into the finish of today's race. Now, it's a little technical coming in the finish, but nothing big deal, just a little drip, dip down before the finish and then about 300 meters to go it's going to come up a little bit to the finish line today top off with about 75 meters and then straight into the line so it's really not complicated it's all wide road super safe and so this looks like it should be an ideal sprinter stage but you have to keep in mind there's some sprinters missing right pseudo quick steps missing fabio jacobson lotto destiny of course is missing caleb ewan so we got some big time teams missing and those guys being gone take away the power you throw in phil bauerhaus from bahrain victorious that's three teams missing you throw in some co guys missing a couple a couple of their helpers that have dropped out of today's race and now all of a sudden you look at brian cocard he's down numbers too so co might not be interested in putting guys on the front you look at astana missing mark cavendish that's a whole team that could be not even remotely interested in the sprint but they do have case bulls but they're missing luis leon sanchez so that could take astana completely out of the picture too so when you're looking at this stage and it's you just finished the mountain stage on yesterday now you're coming in to today's stage 18 you're thinking if you've already won four stages with jasper phillipson winning big time in the first and second week here of the tour de france well you want stage five you want five victories here at the tour de france right so you want a fifth stage but how do you make it happen? Well, it's not complicated, right? You still have Jake Olula. They got Dylan Grunewagen. You know he's going to want a field sprint. DSM have Sam Wellsford. That's three teams. Three teams should be able to control a stage like today and make it a field sprint. But keep in mind, Jake Olula don't only have a sprinter. They also have Simon Yates. And so they got some GC guys that can take power away too. DSM, well, they're a little bit set up, but they are missing one rider in Roman Bardet. And Roman Bardet, I've seen him do some good work at the end of field sprint finishes when he needs to get to the front and pull stuff back. So keep that in mind. There's guys missing even in the sprinter teams because Roman Sinkeldam is missing for Albacine de Kunic too. So that means when you're looking at Jasper Phillipson's team, well, he's got only seven guys here instead of eight. And Ramon Sinkledum is a big lead out guy when we're coming into the last K and a half of a stage. So let's get started in today's stage because once we see the start line and everyone's lined up, well, we see there Tade Pogacar is missing at the front of the line. Come to find out he's doing an interview with the GCN commentators and he's talking about feeling bad and about how yesterday was the worst day he's ever had on the bike. But now he's got to get going because he's running 15 seconds before they leave the neutral start here. So he's already going to get a penalty from the race organizers here at ASO for showing up late. Now we'll see the guys rolling out and we see that Tade Pogacar is not there till the camera backs down. Then you see him a little bit towards the back of the peloton. So we know that the Slovenian is here and ready to race. But when we look at Jumbo Visma, who's missing? Well, Walt Van Art isn't here. He's dropping out and going home because his wife's pregnant and it's time for him to leave the Tour de France before the start here on stage 18. So that takes another sprinter team out of the mix because you know for sure Jumbo Visma would ride coming into the finish of today's stage if Walt Van Art, the big guy, was still in the race. A lot of teams missing, a lot of sprinter teams missing. So you have to play your tactics perfect if you're Albacine de Kunic here on stage 18. We reach kilometer zero. The tax start array start right away. It's quick steps. Casper Asgreen up there throwing an attack. And then it's Uno you know X throwing an attack with Jonas Abrahamson locked onto, onto the pseudo quick step rider, Casper Asgreen's wheel. Those two riders are going up the road. Then you see my man Victor Campanots. Lot of destiny. Well, they're missing Caleb Ewan, but they're not missing my man as he's bridging across. He's gonna put three guys in the front group. We back up and look at the Peloton. EF Education rider was the one chasing hard as the Peloton was completely strung out. And then he pulls off hard right. The Peloton sits up, goes curb to curb. Look there on the left side of the Peloton. Well, that's Jasper Philipson in the green points jersey here. That's won four stages of the Tour de France. As the teams are sitting up going curb to curb, they're going to let these three guys roll up the road. 
Now they're not going to get much of a lead. The biggest I saw was about a hundred. I'm sorry, the biggest I saw was about one minute and forty seconds, and then we start seeing the peloton getting organized back there. Who's chasing? Albacine to Kunick for sure. They're on the front. They got help from DSM and they got help from Jaco. Trek Sega Freighter were up there originally, but I didn't really see them doing much pulling in the early parts of today's stage 18. So we got three teams chasing only three riders. Now, for some unknown reason, these knucklehead sprinter teams, they're holding these three riders at one minute. This is ridiculous. You've heard me say it many times. The main reason you do not hold the front group at one minute is because if, if the teams from behind get motivated, if the guys up in the front just decide to sit up and go back to the field, it starts attacking all over again. If they hold it close and you get onto one of the climbs or bump throughout today's 115 mile stage, then guys can just start jumping across too and causing chaos. You never want to hold the brake at one minute for 115 miles. Albacine de Kunick, Jaco, Alula, and DSM, you guys are all knuckleheads. Well, we go up to the first KOM. We'll see Jonas from Uno X get maximum points. Now keep in mind, Uno X rider Jonas up here, well, he's a sprinter team too, right? Because when we go back, he's got Alexander Kristoff. Remember watching those flat stages when we saw Soren Vornskull doing those big time lead outs with Alexander Kristoff on his wheel? Well, they didn't win because Jasper Philipson's too strong of a rider, but they're up the road. That means one more team is missing. And we'll see that it's the director sportif radio and end from quick step that's saying, Hey, hopefully this is about 150 kilometers ago. And he's saying, hopefully that the Uno X rider continues to work in this group because if he continues to work, the group of three is stronger for sure with Jonas there, but it's more strong too when you look at the Peloton because the Peloton's missing that sprinter team. So that break is even stronger by keeping Uno X in the front so they don't have another team back there to chase. So Albacine de Kunick from Kilometer Zero is already messed up. They've allowed another sprinter team to go in this front group of three, and they're keeping the gap way too close. Well, like I said, they already went over the first KOM with Jonas taking that. Now they're coming up to the second with just over 80 kilometers to go. The three riders in front got about a 45 second gap, like a bunch of knuckleheads from the Peloton just deciding to leave that gap so close. Then we start seeing attacks. Who's going up the road? It's Pascal Inkhorn from Lotto Destiny. You think they planned this? They absolutely planned this because they are starting to get wise. Now, remember, they got my man Victor Campanots in the front group. Pascal and Cornstone in attack, it gets brought back. Then we start seeing attacks from Quentin Pasher from FDJ. As he's attacking, look what's happening in the back. There's another big time attack from Lotto Destiny there. And we see race leader Jasper Philipson. Go with it. Why did he go with it? Let's back the film up just a little bit. They're going curb to curb coming up the climb. You see it's Albacine de Kunick there on the right side. And Pascal Ancorn goes shooting off the grass, misses the car just a little bit, but nudge the Albacine de Kunick rider. So Jasper Philipson's all fluffed up his feathers now, and he's going to go full gas up to the Lotto Destiny rider. And look over to him to the left and kind of push him a little bit left. A lot of Destiny Riders going to drop behind there of Jasper Phillipson. Then attack going up the right. Jasper Phillipson's going to do the same thing and come up. As we see the front view there looking from Quentin Pash here back, we see that, that the Lotto Destiny Riders getting pushed over from Jasper Phillipson. Not a cool move. Very, I have no problems with teams going curb to curb and blocking the road. That's how you race your bike. But once you go up and start pushing riders around left and right, even if they shot a gap that wasn't quite legitimately there with just a little bit of rubbing, that was all it was. And you got to expect that it's coming. If you're going to go curb to curb, you got to expect that you might get rubbed with a rider attack. And especially when you left the gap up to 40, only up to 45 seconds to the breakaway of three with his teammate, my man, Victor Campanot's in there. Well, they'll go over the top of the KOM, the three riders. It's Jonas Abrahamson up there that gets maximum points, and he'll go over first. Behind, Quentin Pasher still pushing hard because they never got brought back. And then we start seeing some more attacks from Fred Wright. That all gets brought back. And then we see it in some more talking there from Jasper Philipson to the Lotto Destiny rider after he tried to attack. And we see some more argument. Everything gets brought back. And with about 73 kilometers to go, Pascal Ankhorn from Lotto Destiny is throwing in another attack. He's trying to go across to his teammate. We go up front to the three riders. You look up there, my man Victor Campanas knows he's coming because they got the race radios. He's going to sit up. He's going to look back. He's going to look forward, wondering like, whoo, this is going to be tight. He's going to grab Pascal Ankhorn, and then those guys are going to go full gas up to the two riders in front. Now we see pseudo quick step, Asgreen up there going full gas. He's going a little bit to the right, and Jonas 
Abrahamson in there is to the left, and my man Victor Camp and I shoot straight between them, going full gas. Then Jonas has to get on the gas and accelerate. Next thing you know, we got four riders in this front group now instead of three, because we got some knuckleheads in the back. These four riders are going solid. They're going to extend their gap up to about one minute and 10 seconds on the peloton. And then with about 45 kilometers to go, the peloton's kicking it in gear. How do I know? Well, it's strung out and going fast. You look at the group back there, it's single file all over the place. So you know the peloton's going fast because every time we go up to the group of four up here, we see Victor Campanots and the these four guys are in team time trial mode. Victor Campanot's got his head going down and he's pushing hard. We see the speeds even through the roundabout here hitting 46 kilometers an hour. So you know they're going full gas. With 30 kilometers to go back there, they're still holding about a 45 second gap, but it's under a minute now. So we know it's touch and go. We get under 20 kilometers to go, just about 18 or so, and we start seeing the GC guys are battling. Yumbo Visma's coming up there, UAE Team Emirates are coming to the front, and it's narrowing a little bit. Also, well, important notice here, you see pseudo quick steps start coming up to the front. With about 18 kilometers to go, maybe just under, we'll see Julian Alaphilippe. He's going to come around the left and come up to the front because we're coming up to a left turn followed by another right turn. As we're coming up there, you see that on the right side, that's Lawson Craddock from Jake Olula. Jake Olula has been pulling all day long. Lawson Craddock deserves the front spot here at the Peloton. But Julian Alaphilippe knows we got a little technical section coming up with a left and a right, and he's got his teammate Casper Asgreen in that front group, so he wants to slow his roll. The whole peloton, he wants to slow down. But Lawson Craddock, the American rider from Jake Olula, is not having any of it. There's going to be a little bump. It. They're going to go through the left. I lose the picture a little bit. As you see, the buildings come into the picture. Then they're coming out of the right there, and as they're coming out of the right, we'll get the forward view. Look, Julian Alaphilippe is not happy with the American rider, and the American Ryder Craddock's like, I don't care. We're going full gas here. We're trying to make it a field sprint because I got Dylan Grunewagen on my team. So get out of my way, Julian Alaphilippe. Julian Alaphilippe blacks up, but he's still just in about fifth, sixth position when again he's arguing with Lawson Craddock a second, third time right here going under 18 kilometers to go. Now we start seeing some other teams get on the front. Bora Hansgrohe's getting in there and again we see Julian Alaphilippe arguing. We're coming under 10.5 kilometers to go. It's Skillmost from Trek Sega Freda, one of their climbers here. Remember he won Tour de Suisse just before the Tour de France started? I take you all the way back to stage two when Wout Van Aert needed some help from Jonas Vinigo and their director sportif said, Ah, Jonas Vinigo's not a big enough guy to really help out the sprinters. Well, now we're 10 and a half kilometers to go, stage 18 of the Tour de France, and it's a GC rider, Skillmost. He's a tiny little guy, and he's pulling full gas. He's going to do some big time work on the front. We get it to just about seven and a half, seven K to go. We're going to see Inner Marche start coming up and rotating into the back of the line there, but Julian Alaphilippe is still causing problems. We get just about seven, maybe just a hair under. We see Tim DeClercs up there with Julian Alaphilippe. Philippe too. When Skillmost is rotating off the front, he's drifting back and Julian Alaphilippe is giving Skillmost a hard time to just slot back in. He's causing chaos throughout this final stage from 20 kilometers all the way in here with about seven and a half kilometers to go. Now, if I back the film up to 10 kilometers to go, when Skillmost was on the front at one time, it was just Skillmost and one other rider. I was sitting on the Chesterfield. I started texting my, my boys, Mike D, and I said, man, these guys are in trouble. There's only two guys chasing four up front, and every time we see the four, the speeds are 60, 70 kilometers an hour. I don't know how they're going to catch it. Well, we see Skillmost with just about five kilometers to go coming into this roundabout to the right. Skillmost pulls all the way to the right coming out of the roundabout because his legs are blown, so he's getting out of the way. We look over to the left. Who's there? That's Bora Hansgrohe's Niels Pollitt. Niels Pollitt's been having a fantastic Tour de France, riding strong throughout the mountain stages here, and he's a big, big, big guy. So today, can he do some damage? Can he bring these four riders back? I don't think so because these guys are going fast, but it's Niels Pollitt. He's caught on the front with about 16 seconds, maybe just under 20 seconds gap to the group in four, and he's going full gas. Niels Paulette will do an amazing job. The problem with the tactic here from Niels Paulette, his legs are too fresh. He, nobody else is at the front. We look at GC teams there and pseudo quick step all over the place. Now we're coming up to about 2.5 kilometers to go and we'll look at the group of four as they're coming through the, the tr furniture, the traffic furniture left and right. The peloton's hot on their wheels. About nine seconds but they still don't have a ton of power back there. 
up front, we're hitting 1.5. We see the group of four, they're still drilling at 100%. We go back, oh man, there's drama back there. There's just no numbers. There's no concise lead out team with any numbers left to pull these four guys back. Go up to 1.1 and I'm thinking, wow, if these guys work all the way into the finish, there's no way the Peloton can catch them, even though the gap is under 10 seconds and they're right behind this group of four. But my man, Victor Campanots at 1.1, he's drilling it on the front. Guys, this is what he does. This is why I love Victor Campanots. He surprises, impress, and does funky things that sometimes pay off. Well, Victor Campanots is throwing down 100%, and we're going under 1K to go. With Vic up front, we go back to the Peloton and see what's happening. There's two Astana riders on the front just before for 1k to go and one of them's their sprinter so you know there's only one guy pulling the peloton now we go back to up front with 700 meters to go Victor Campanazza started to sprint. Guys, he started pulling at 1.1. Now it's 700 meters to go. That's 400 meters already. He's starting to sprint, going full gas. He's trying to get to 300 meters. He's going to get to 400 meters, but let's back the film up and look at the peloton. We're coming under 1K to go. Al Basin de Kunic has gotten on the front with three riders. Remember, they started the race with seven. Now they're down to three. It's Jonas Rickard on the front, followed by Matthew Vanderpool. And then we see Jasper Philipson as they got three riders going full gas. Let's go back up to the front because my man Victor Campanot's legs are starting to blow. We're coming up to about 400 meters. He was trying to get to three, but he didn't quite make it because he had Jonas Abrahansen from Uno X on his wheel. So he's hoping to get to 300 because he knows if he can get to three, it's still a little far ways to go for Jonas. And his man, Ankhorn, is sitting last here just behind Casper Asgri. Well, like I said, he made it to four. We see Jonas as he's on the front. He's looking back once. He's looking back twice. He's looking back three times. I'm like, there's no more time to look back. The Peloton's hot on your hill being led by Albacine de Kunic back there. As we see the last look back, now it's 250 meters to go. Jonas Jonas Abrahansen th starts his sprint. He digs hard. 200 meters to go, though. It's Asgreen that starts his sprint. Jonas stays to the right. Casper Asgreen goes to the left. Full gas. Now, I told you guys it was a bump. Started with about 300 meters to go, and it's a hard little bump. We see Jonas on the right. Casper Asgreen's going full gas. He's finally starting to show the ugly face. If I back the film up just a little bit to about 900, maybe 800 meters to go, we'll see Casper Asgreen. He was taking a drink out of his bottle. When everyone else was showing an ugly face. Casper Asgreen still looked calm as a bomb and at 900 meters to go he was drinking water. Now we're up here. It's 200 meters going into about 75. Casper Asgreen now has got the front. He is starting to pull away from Jonas all the way on the right side of the wheel but he's got Pascal Ankhorn on his wheel. Now with that with Casper Asgreen going full gas now you see the ugly face at 50 meters to go but he knows he's going to hold off Pascal Ankhorn from Lotto Destiny. He'll sit up with about 10 meters to go. Celebrate after he crosses the line just to make sure he wins today's stage 18 for pseudo quick step because they've had a dry spell until Casper Asgreen's magical finish here on stage 18 to win the stage with some help from my man Victor Campanas. Now when I back the film up second on the stage Pascal Ankhorn third Jonas Abrahansen what happened to fourth well fourth the peloton started swarming around my man Victor Campanats as he was looking back with 75 meters to go knowing his legs were dead he'll get swarmed finish 16th but fourth will be Jasper Philipson who really came up snake eyes on today's stage 16 because Alba seen that Kunick you guys are a bunch of knuckleheads made all kinds of mistakes when I show you the interview from their DS he says they didn't miscalculate it. I'm like, that was almost the first sentence out of his mouth from Kristoff is, we didn't miscalculate the stage. Yes, you miscalculated today's stage. You miscalculate because you let you know X, one of the sprinter teams that have a sprinter still left in this stage 18, you let him into a three-man group. You miscalculated because you kept the gap at one minute instead of keeping it at two and a half or three minutes throughout the stage. And then you miscalculated at the end because when you look at your Jonas Ricker doing the lead out and you look at Matthew Vanderpool, you saved two guys and you even said in your own interview that you only came up one guy short. Well, Matthew Vanderpool, when we look at the sprint from behind, we'll see that Albacine de Kunick was hitting out with Jonas Ricker going under a K to go. But Matthew Vanderpool, when Jonas Ricker pulled off, only was able to do about 100 meters, 150 meters on the front. Then he got swarmed from Jaco Lula 
and Mads Pedersen, who took the front coming up the final 200 meters. But Jasper Philipsen relieved Mads Pedersen in the front before he crossed the line. But when I'm looking at Matthew Vanderpool's work, why didn't you put him on the front? This is what I'm talking about when I'm speaking of Matthew Vanderpool being a lead out guy when everyone's saying he's the best in the business. He's the strongest in the business. It's undeniable. There's no doubt about that. You go back to Trino Adriatico early in this 2023 season, him and Jasper Philipsen were working great. But the difference between Matthew Vanderpool and a rider like Michael Morkoff from Pseudo Quickstep, Morkoff would have seen that, wow, I need to get on the front and start pulling. And Jasper Philipson's going to just have to find a way to win today's stage 18 on his own. But first, we got to bring back these group of four. Because every time when you're looking at that group of four doing 50, 60, 70 kilometers an hour, that means the peloton behind has to be doing 10K an hour faster than they are in order to bring them back. And the only guy that can do that is Matthew Vanderpool. But instead, they saved him. So yes, Christoph, the DS director sportif from Albacine de Kunick, you came up at least one guy short and his name was Matthew Vanderpool because unlike Marco Morkoff he doesn't know when to get to the front and when not to get to the front under different circumstances as we know in bike races they are always changing non-stop we look at my man Victor Campanot's interview he said exactly what I've always said. The Peloton's not very smart nowadays. They left the gap too close. We were waiting up the whole time to have Inkhorn come across. Once he got there, we went full gas. And then, of course, he delivered a mar marvelous five, 600-meter pull at the finish so that the brake can stay away and hold off the Peloton behind. Great job from my man, Victor Campanots. He'll get the most combative jersey at the end of today's stage 18 here of the Tour de France. And when we're talking pseudo quick step, Julian Alaphilippe, you were something amazing, causing chaos back there from 20 kilometers to go all the way to the finish. You're going to have some guys that you might not want to meet in the hotel elevator alone by yourself after today's stage 18. But Casper Asgreen, well, if he's with you, you know he's got your back all the way down the elevator right up to the dinner table, so you'll be okay. Just travel with the Wolf Pack and you'll be fine. Otherwise, Julian Alaphilippe, do not get caught alone in the elevator here at the Tour de France. You could be in some trouble. Either way, it was a great finish, especially the last 20K. If you got some time, maybe watch from 80K to go, but certainly the last 20 was magical here. And the breakaway, congratulations. Love seeing the break stay off by such a slim margin at the finish of the stage. Albacine de Kunick, go back to the drawing board because you guys were terrible with your tactics up here on the butterfly effect. Like and subscribe. I'll see you guys for stage 19 at the Tour de France real soon.